Hi, my name is Chris Lazarus and I am the Chief Operating Officer and Principal Broker here at Select Realty in Marietta, Georgia. Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can build a production studio for your real estate business and we're going to talk about two different types of content production. First being video and the second being audio. So we're going to talk about how the room is set up, what kind of gear we use, why we've selected that gear, and how you can set up a production studio for very minimal cost with a high quality product that you can turn around very quickly. The benefits to creating content in your real estate business are very simple. It's all about creating a relationship with your audience so that when people look you up before they decide whether or not they want to talk to you about business, they're going to determine whether or not they like you and think that you have what it takes. Brian Buffini says it well in his podcast where he says people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So stay tuned as we go through the gear that we have here at Select Realty and what tools and software we use to create the best quality content for our agents interacting with their clients. One of the original cameras that we started with here at Select Realty was this Sony NEX VG10. The reason we decided to start with this camera, it is a 1080 video camera that accepts interchangeable lenses. So you can take the lens off and put a new one on. This allowed us for a shoestring budget to create some really cool effects using a video camera. With a prime lens, we're able to get a blurred background called a bokeh. And then with a wide angle lens, we're able to take videos utilizing the whole space of a room. We've outgrown this in need of a little bit more uh, high resolution camera, so we're currently using a 4K primary video camera. I'll go into that in detail shortly. But with your camera, there's a couple of things that you want in order for it to be uh, versatile in lots of different applications. The first that you want is some outputs. On this camera, it has an HDMI out. So right here, we're able to plug in an HDMI camera cord so that we can actually, through an adapter, use this camera to stream live on Facebook, YouTube, or to record directly to our computer instead of an SD card. We'll get into that shortly. On the camera, we have this little fuzzy part. This is called a dead cat. And this covers the microphone. The purpose of a dead cat is to reduce wind noise when used outside. So if you do not have a camera that has a high quality microphone built in, you're gonna want to add a quality microphone. You can do that two ways. A style of microphone that sticks out from the camcorder is called a shotgun mic. You can mount it on the camera, plug it straight into the camera, and that's all you gotta do. You point and it picks up the audio off of your subject. The second type of microphone that you can use is called a wireless lav mic or lavalier. That's this type where it pins to your shirt you have a wireless transceiver that sends the audio signal to the camera as you're talking. I'm a fan of the wireless mics because when using a wireless mic, we have a little bit more control over the audio quality. The mic is closer to the mouth, so the audio is a little bit clearer. We're using a Comica wireless mic setup it comes with two uh, wireless receivers or wireless transmitters that connect to mics. So you can have two people speaking and one receiver. So that, that's the setup that we've chosen to go with. And you can use that with almost any type of camera. You can use it with uh, any camera that has a three and a half millimeter audio jack, like this, where your camera plugs in, it's a little tiny hole. or uh, with other cameras like the Sony uh, Alpha line where it has a Bluetooth receiver and you can plug the three and a half millimeter jack into the Bluetooth receiver.
One of the most important parts about choosing a camera are the lenses. A basic camera body can make some pretty fantastic photos, but it's limited by the lenses that you're able to use with it. One of my favorite lenses is the G lens for the Sony Alpha. This lens is an 18 to 24 millimeter lens with an f4 focal length. This operates on the E mount for the Sony Alpha series. This is a this is a crop sensor camera which keeps it really small and really lightweight. It's ideal for taking in the field because it's relatively small, but it's high resolution makes for some spectacular photos and video. This camera is limited to a maximum of about 20 minutes of consistent video shooting uh, without timing out. The Sony Alpha camera gives some amazing capabilities, including a great viewfinder, but most importantly, and what I found to be very helpful, is that it also has an HDMI out like our Sony NEX VG10. By utilizing the HDMI out, we can get multiple camera angles in our live stream productions. And when it comes to producing quality video, lighting is extremely important. The difference between quality lighting and inferior lighting is that it's even and your white balance on your camera is properly set. To control the lighting in the Select Realty Studio, we use a uh, large softbox that's made by a company called Godox. And this softbox comes with a honeycomb lining on the inside, which helps prevent light spread. It directs the light straight ahead. This light has three switches on the back, so that you can control the power level of the lights inside the softbox. You can run two lights, four lights, or five lights. And the power levels of the lights are different. So this allows you to get uh, quite a bit of control. You can also change the direction of the softbox to be wide in, uh, instead of vertical. Lighting is one of the most important factors of creating video and having something that's versatile like the Godox softbox, we carry two of them that are here in the studio, makes it very easy to plug in, turn on, and start recording. Now what good is video without quality audio? This is an Audio-Technica shotgun boom mic, which is a mono mic, meaning it only records on one channel. That doesn't mean that you can't use it for stereo audio. What it does mean is that uh, a stereo uh, channel is always going to be pure static on this and you have to edit in say a software like Adobe Audition where you go in and choose that the audio track represents both right and left side in your production. So this is an Audio-Technica. Uh, a comparable mic like this new would probably run about four or five hundred dollars. We were able to get this for the studio relatively inexpensive on eBay for about eighty. So you can find gear relatively inexpensively uh, and collect it over time. So this is a 4K field monitor. This is extremely helpful if you are recording by yourself, either in studio or in the field. What this does is it allows you to see the viewfinder on your camera. You take an HDMI out off of your camera and plug it in on the side. You will see everything that is on your camera's viewfinder right here, and you mount it to a bracket that goes right in front of your computer, right in front of your camera, so you can see where you position yourself on screen. This has been extremely helpful for me as I've done agent tutorial videos from my studio without the aid of a camera operator. You hit record, you position yourself, then you start. Now, once you have the camera, the audio, and the lighting set up, you're going to need a background. This is where the studio comes in handy. 
At Select Realty, we use Savage paper. These are eight foot rolls of colored paper that are designed to absorb light. We have them on rollers mounted from the ceiling that we can pull down and have backgrounds in any shade that we like. So as we go to create content, sometimes we need a white background. This works for uh, our headshots and informationals. We can also have a, back, a black background. And this drops down just the same as the white one does. They're on rollers and they operate on a pull chain system. And then when we need to create some custom backgrounds, we can use the green paper to do what's called keying. Keying is a green screen effect and you do that in our software, which we'll go into different softwares that you can use for your studio. But we choose to use the, uh, the Adobe suite of products because it's very versatile and covers everything that we need. So Savage Paper is different than most backgrounds. Uh, there are fabric backgrounds, but fabric can wrinkle and it takes a ton of upkeep to keep fabric tight so that the color doesn't bounce off everywhere and give you a bad effect in your post-production editing. With the Savage Paper, when you start getting some wrinkling after use, you cut it and pull down more paper off of the roll. They're relatively inexpensive. A roll is about $50, and the, uh, the roller setup was about 100 so you're, per color, you can choose any color that you want, but uh, we chose to go with the green, the black, and the white because they were very versatile. Speaking of backgrounds, you'll see that I am standing under a hair lamp, and a hair lamp is a light that is specifically designed to light your head. This gives a great effect of really standing out against your background. Now, one of the backgrounds that we have here at Select Realty is this textured noise diffusing panel system. This is off of Amazon, they're just 3D panels. Uh, we didn't even paint it, we just installed it up against the wall. This helps with audio deflection and sound absorption so that you don't get as much of an echo in the room that you're creating content in. It helps create a, a, a crisper audio and takes a lot off the editing process after your production has occurred. The hair lamp is also on a boom mic and it has a five pound weight, counterweight on the other side that keeps it from tipping over all the time. Uh, these panels were one of the first things that we did in the Select Realty Studio. They've been here since day one and one of the smartest decisions that we've made. Now as we move along into the audio portion of our Select Realty Studio, I want you to notice we have multiple sound absorption panels here. Uh, we have these two by fours. These panels are filled with a sound absorption insulation and they're on top of sound absorbing wall panels. Uh, we found that the sound absorption panels were not enough on their own with the way that this building is designed so we added in the, the sound dampening panels uh, thereafter. The sound dampening panels for a pack of 48 on Amazon are about $45. So with the audio system taken care of, the sound dampening on point reduces a lot of the reverberations here in the studio. The next thing that we have is our podcast desk. We have four Audio-Technica mics that are all uh, very high quality because when you're producing a podcast, the important thing is the quality of audio because nothing will turn off a subscriber more than tuning in, hearing what seems to be garbled audio, lots of noise, lots of static, or lots of echo. If you want to have a, uh, a, the ability to grow a following in your podcast, the quality of the audio is the most important thing that you're gonna find. So starting with the mics, this is one of the most important parts. And on a podcast, especially if it's relatively new, I recommend you start with a, uh, a, a USB microphone. Uh, there's some great ones. I'm a fan of the Blue Snowball. Uh, there's uh, the Blue Yeti. 
but then the Audio Technica side also makes some USB microphones, um, which we're using Audio Technica mics in the office. We have two AT2035s and two AT2020s. On the AT2020s, they make a USB version of that microphone. So you can skip the whole uh, mixer and desk and go straight into the computer uh, and save a significant amount of money when you're first starting. We have four mics, one, two, three, and four, all of which have mic flags on them, which uh, just came in and we're having the Select Realty logos added. Uh, we have our monitor block in the center, which brings in an, an audio headphone feed, and each of the headphones that are here plug into it, and you can control the volume there. We have our computer with webcam uh, set up and ready to record and the computer gets its audio feed from our mixer. Our mixer takes all the microphones, gives us the ability to control the audio, the time, the pitch, the, uh, through an equalizer, we can adjust the volume through different gains. So we can adjust the high pitch volume, the mid range and the low pitch volume. And this gives us great flexibility. And when we bring in a guest for the show, it actually seems pretty cool for them also to be a part of such a production. So we definitely try to emphasize the production values of the podcast when, we, when we're recording here. Uh, we currently have three podcasts that are recorded out of this office. Uh, one is remotely, the Rethink Real Estate podcast. That is the oldest. Uh, and then uh, Rants, Raves, and Real Estate is a new podcast that is about to launch by one of our agents. And Portraits of Atlanta is a podcast that is uh, presented by Select Realty designed to promote our community members to the community. So here we have a table that is not square, it's rounded so it makes guests feel comfortable. And we have four swivel chairs that are very easy to maneuver around, they're comfortable, you can uh, look at your guest without having to maneuver difficultly all over the carpet. We've put a significant amount of thought into how this operates, all the way down to installing the XLR jacks into the table. So when you have a microphone, your microphone is going to operate off of one of two ways. If it's a high quality microphone, it is going to operate off of an XLR cable. This is a powered audio feed. You will need uh, an amplifier to. Uh, you will need an amplifier to power this. This is usually handled by our mixer here in the studio, which has a phantom amp built in, so it will issue the power to power the mics. If you go with the AT2020 USB version, you won't need this. It'll go straight into your computer. If you're having one or two guests. USB is probably the way to go. If you're going more than two, then it's going to be much higher quality if you invest in a good mixer. So one of the most important parts of our setup here is the Behringer Pro FX 8-channel mixer. This is a USB mixer that will allow us to run all of the XLR mics into it adjust the sounds to get the desired output, and then give us a USB feed so that we can bring it into the computer just like any other USB mic. Here we have our mics, one, two, three, and four, the XLR inputs coming out of the table. Then we have our main outs, which go to the audio headphones for monitoring. We have our phantom power button right here, which gives power to the XLR mics. At the bottom, we have our gain per channel, so we can keep the channel gains separate, or if one person has a softer voice, we can increase one. We have the channel equalizers, where we can adjust the gain based off of pitch and who sits where. We have our graphic equalizer, where we can adjust the ins and outs and, and the vocal levels as it's going into the computer. And we have 
effects. If we needed to run special effects, we could do reverbs, uh, adjust the size of the room, make it sound like we're in a concert hall, all sorts of fun things. There's a couple other odds and ends that I want to mention for our studio that have been extremely beneficial. One is a great power bank. This Furman power bank has uh, 10 uh, power outlets on the back side of it and a switch here, and they're rack mounted. So we have a 4U rack that is expandable for another two, and we have a four channel wireless microphone system that is also built into this that we can turn on, adjust the volume, turn on the mics, and have an additional input with up to four extra mics. This is beneficial if we're doing um, audio recording on the computer while filming um, with the green screen and the camera. This also makes it really easy so that when I want to shut everything off, I have one switch for the man. One of the most frequently used centers of running a studio is right here. This Ansman 16 bank or battery charging station has been one of the saviors of my office. When we keep the power on, you'll see that all of these light up, they're connected, and they will charge all of our camera batteries, as well as maintaining uh, a database of rechargeable AA and AAA batteries right here, as well as nine volts and some odds and ends in the other one. This has been amazing because we no longer purchase batteries in bulk. When we run as many microphones as we do here, you end up burning through batteries pretty quickly. Uh, by ordering, I think we have two or three of the 36 packs of the Amazon rechargeable batteries. With this charging bank, we are always in business. So I want to thank you for taking your time and touring the Select Realty Studio with me today. One of the things that we pride ourselves on is the ability to help our agents create their own content and build the relationship with their audience. For us, real estate is all about the relationship and we want to make sure that as many agents out there are able to do exactly what they need to do in order to build that relationship with their audience. By the way, this video was shot on our Panasonic 4K camcorder which is available on Amazon for about $700. It has a Leica lens, HDMI outs, and can handle the wireless mics that we need in our training videos. Wireless mics also make a great uh, addition to your arsenal when you are recording in a room with heavy echo. Because it's picking up the voice so close to the mic, it reduces the echo that you're gonna hear in your video. On the next video, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth on software, so this has ended up being more about the hardware and how the studio is set up. We're gonna split up the video and do another one on software and what we use to edit our real estate videos, including resources for finding videos, or stock videos for B-roll, finding images with royalty-free or inexpensive stock images uh, that you can use in your video productions. We'll also cover how to go into audio and find audio that you can use in your production and that you can publish on YouTube without any copyright issues. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Chris Lazarus. Have a great day.